One of those things I really enjoy having on a cold day out in the woods is a cup of hot chocolate or hot cocoa. And I usually pack a few of those envelopes of pre-made ones. Now, the issue with them is, of course, this, they're high in sugar and low in fat. Exactly what you don't want if you're on a low-carb or ketogenic diet. So I started to look around to see if there was an alternative. And I decided to make up my own recipe. So that's what I want to share with you today. My own keto hot chocolate. If you're interested, keep watching. So coming up with the recipe for my homemade uh, keto hot cocoa was a lot easier than I thought. In fact, I had the ingredients already around the home. It was just a matter of experimenting and coming up with the right amounts of each. So what did I use? So I started with cocoa, obviously, some cocoa powder. Now, I use two tablespoons for this. You can add more and see how it comes out. But for me right now, two tablespoons seems to work well. Um, I'm using a well-known brand name, but make sure whatever brand you use that it has no added ingredients like sugar in it of any type so you don't want to do that and there is some darker uh, hot cocos available which actually have more fat in them which would be even better if you can get your hands on that. I used two tablespoons of monk fruit blend sweetener. Now I ran mine through a coffee grinder just to powder it almost like a confectioner's uh, sugar might be just for quicker dissolving when it gets into the water. I also used two tablespoons of chocolate MCT powder and I use the Nativa brand. Now you don't have to use either that brand or chocolate flavored. You can use a regular flavored uh, like vanilla or no flavored MCT powder but this is where the primary source of fat is coming from and it's worthwhile having one that stays mixed into the drink and I found some that I tried early on in my keto uh, lifestyle that there are ones that don't seem to mix well but the Nativa does for whatever reason. I used three tablespoons of whole milk powder. Even better would be if you can get your hands on heavy cream powder because that would add more fat and I think more richness to the drink as well. If you're not into using either milk products, then you could use a non-dairy uh, low-carb whitener. And I have tried that. I just wasn't happy with the... I mean, it whitened it. It just didn't taste creamy. It didn't give the texture that I was looking for, but you're welcome to give it a try as well. And finally, just eight ounces of water. So super simple recipe. And of course, I'll put these ingredients and their numbers in the video description below for you to base yours on. I would recommend you experiment with yours and try it at home and before you put it in a bag and take it out to the woods. So what did I come up with for macros? Very simple. This one little bag of uh, hot cocoa, and I will have to put the uh, weight on the screen afterwards because I forgot to write it down, but I will tell you it comes out to about 197, 197 calories. That's my best estimate based on the individual items that are the components for it. What's nice is that 17 grams of this is fat and that makes about 60% of this. Eight grams is protein, and finally, three net carbs, three grams of net carbohydrates, and those come out of the whole milk powder as milk sugar, so very low, Ideal would be zero, but still very low and not bad for something that really is just a treat uh, on the trail. Okay, that's all there is to the recipe. The only thing I have to do now is get some water onto a boil and make the cup of hot cocoa. All right, so my water has come to a boil. Get the cocoa into the cup. I can actually take this bag home and refill it. It's already been labeled, right? So put that back in my food bag. Now, uh, if in case anybody's interested, I am using the Flux Wrap, the Flux Rapid as it is now known, and with some improved pot stands. So I will be coming back with another review of this, but uh, that's not the focus of the video today. Let's get the lid off. And of course, using a zebra is a little tricky. But not impossible. Just a little practice. Yeah. 
All right, I'm going to give you a look at this just to show you what it looks like. I will tell you now, I'm going to be adding more whole milk powder to it or heavy cream powder if I can get my hands on it. It is, looks good, it's very, very chocolatey. I just like mine to be a little creamy, more creamy than this, but that's quite okay. It seems to have dissolved well. All right, I'm going to reposition the camera and uh, show you what it looks like. All right, I had to let it cool down a minute or two. Oh, that is good. Okay, I'll give you a look at it. It's actually creamier than I first gave it credit for. Uh, well, let me just show it to you. Hopefully this will focus in on it. It's actually not too bad. It, it creamed up quite nicely. There were two things I was... Uh, concerned with when putting this recipe together and one is that it would taste good of course but two that the ingredients would stay mixed and they wouldn't start to separate and you wouldn't start to see blobs of oil from the MCT uh, powder on top or the cocoa not mixing in or anything else and it seems to have all mixed in very well the texture is just like a regular cup of hot cocoa but I, and it's very chocolatey, which is great. I, I think I will add another tablespoon of whole milk powder. That'll add about one more gram of net carbs, but it'll also add some additional fat and protein. So it should make up for that, for the net carbs, and just add some more richness to it. Again, if I can get my hands, uh, and I can, you can purchase it. It just, it's in big cans of whole cream powder, then you're going to get that much uh, more richness to this. Okay, I am not disappointed in any way. This is not a substitute or a, a second-class substitute to the real thing. This is the real thing. All right, that's all I wanted to do is to share with you very quickly a recipe that you can put together at home to make an instant hot cocoa that you can take with you on the trail or have at home for that matter which is a great thing to have on a cold day. Right, there, right now it's late October, running about seven degrees Celsius. Not really cold, but it's as cold as I've been in the woods yet this season. So it's just nice to be able to start off the winter season or the fall and winter season with a cup of hot cocoa. All right, cheers everyone. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.